don't let your preference for avoiding what is unpleasant cloud your perception. It can be an enormous opportunity because your silence is something that needs to be tested and the more that it is tested and you find that you are, you are getting disturbed is the more it is an indication that you are not yet well established within yourself. And think about it in this way. Suppose in your experience you perceive everything as just one fundamental energy then how are you going to draw any dividing lines between what's good, what's bad, what's right, what's wrong, what's sacred, what's not sacred, what's pure, what's impure? Everything in, in existence reveals itself to be the same snake swallowing its own tail, the same energy expressing itself in many different forms. If this is your living experience, then right now as you are talking to me and I'm talking to you, you are not perceiving me as separate from you. I am just you, but in another form, as far as energy is concerned, or in another way. You can look at it like this. Everything that you are experiencing in life, since everything is happening within the field of your awareness, and you have never had any other experience except your own awareness, right? does that make at least a little bit of logical sense? There's no, as far as the source of your experience is concerned, it's being manufactured from within. And every kind of experience you're having in life is just happening within the field of your awareness. So you wake up, you hear the birds chirping in the morning. You're not hearing the birds out there in the trees. You're hearing it. Where are you hearing it? Within yourself. You're driving on the road. You see a mountain in the distance. Where are you seeing the mountain? The mountain is also within you. But uh, that's not the way that you are perceiving things right now. Because you are making these discriminations with your intellect. And you are having attraction to what you like and having aversion from what you dislike. So then your ego becomes interferes into the process. But without the interference of the ego into the process, just think about it. Everything you're experiencing is just, your awareness is just like a mirror. Whatever comes in front of the mirror, the mirror never judges. It never says, oh, this is so beautiful, I want to preserve it. It doesn't say, oh, this is so ugly, it needs to be condemned. And then it is just pure energy, simply reflecting. That is the quality of a meditative consciousness. It's not something that you can do. We talked about this so many times. But you, you cannot meditate, but you can become meditative. And you are meditative. Your meditation is inescapable. Whatever you do, at whatever time, at whatever place, Everything that comes out of your being will be an expression of your meditation. This is what is in the Zen monasteries. The whole system of training in Zen is intended to bring about this experience. Because in Zen the meditation is, ne is not about sitting meditation. It's not limited to that alone. We talked once about why the monastery has been invented in Zen. Because it was found if your whole practice is just limited to sitting meditation, your mind has to become so passive that you are no longer deeply involved. This is an unintegrated state of being. You want to be meditative and yet active at the same time. Some, some meditators have experienced this, where they become so deeply meditative, but it's at the expense of being active in the world. And there are some yogis, they can sit in very deep states of samadhi. In their perception, time has disappeared, space has disappeared. In their inner experience, they are just engrossed in the very source of creation. But they are unable to get up and do very ordinary things. It, as if they are dysfunctional in the world. Yes, they are absorbed in their fundamental nature. But your fundamental nature is everywhere and nowhere. Right? If 
you, the, if your very fundamental nature is flowing throughout all things, then it must be everywhere, right? It's not just the source of your being, it's the source of the whole creation. This is why they've always been saying, Sarvam Brahmasmi, everything is divine. Well, what has been said in the Bible? God is everywhere. What are these kinds of statements indicating? They're saying your fundamental nature is not something personal, it's impersonal. It's beyond time and space, flowing through all things. So, whether you're absorbed in your innermost samadhi, or whether you're just living in the relative world, the so-called relative world, still you're experiencing one and the same thing, aren't you? Don't make these divisions in the mind between the absolute and the relative, the beyond and the ordinary, the mundane and the super mundane. Amongst in Zen and amongst the Buddhists, they have a very insightful statement. They said, samsara is nirvana and nirvana is samsara. You ever heard that statement? Samsara, they're referring to the cycle of birth and death. Don't look at it in terms of metaphysical terms. You can just understand it in terms of the relative world, time and space, and nature, how nature is always recycling energy throughout existence. That's samsara. Nirvana, that which is beyond the limitations of the time and space. So what they said is that there is no distinction between the two. They are equated. Samsara is nirvana and nirvana is samsara. It's one and the same fundamental nature. The moment you create any division, now you're caught up in a dualism. And once there's a dualism, that means there's division. Once there's division, now there is conflict. Don't you see this? As long as in your perception there is a division, not in the sense that you can't separate, you can't perceive things as separate from you. It's necessary for you to, to be able to discriminate between things, but you don't get entangled in this belief that you're separate from the whole. Once that comes, now oh, you're struggling against the whole universe. And that's a never-ending struggle. It takes a little bit of time, effort, and energy to learn how to integrate your meditation. But that's the beauty of meditation. It can be done anywhere. It all has to do with the inner atmosphere you're carrying with you. It reminds me of a disciple who went to see. Maybe we've looked into this before. Anyway, so there was a disciple, he went to see his Zen master and he said, please teach me meditation. So he sat in the upright posture, in the lotus posture, and he was waiting to receive the teaching. So the first question the master asked him, he said, what do you want to get out of sitting meditation? What's the point? The, the disciple said, I want to become a Buddha. I want to realize my true self. Then the master, this is the way of Zen. It doesn't want to waste time with words. It just wants to strike directly to the essential. So what he did is he picked up a brick and he started polishing the brick. So the disciple, being very confused, he thought, what's the meaning of this gesture? He said, Master, what do you think you're trying to do? And he said, I'm trying to make a mirror. So, the disciple laughed. He said, how on earth can you create a mirror? By polishing a brick. Then the master said, in the same way, how can you expect to be a Buddha through sitting meditation alone? If you really want to know the true spirit of meditation, the real essence of meditation, you should know that 
meditations without any fixed form. So it's not about sitting meditation. Seeing what your flame of wakefulness is burning within you, this is seeing meditation. Hearing, but still that undercurrent of awareness remains undisturbed. This is hearing meditation. Smelling becomes smelling meditation. Walking becomes walking meditation. Lying down becomes lying down meditation. It becomes a natural expression of your being. So while you're... It takes a bit of effort in the beginning because the whole key is just this. If you can just take a mental note and stick with this one key. It's so simple, but it appears to be very difficult. This is the fundamental thing, self-remembrance, which means an effort to remember to bring your attention back into the present moment. You find your mind has drifted off, and that's the nature of the mind, as at least of a clouded mind. It's always entangled in imagination or in the memories of the past. Do you find your mind has drifted off? It could be for whatever reason. In that split moment, to bring your attention back into the present moment, you find more and more this self-remembrance happens when you're bringing your attention back again and again and again. There comes a point where now it becomes an automatic process. You no longer have to initiate an effort. It starts to become part of your very nature. So don't be discouraged by, I don't want you to be discouraged by whatever obstacles you may be experiencing. If you keep on moving, let's say you have heaps of obstacles along the way, but you keep on moving in one direction without being discouraged and with perseverance, but moving in one direction, sooner or later, a breakthrough is bound to happen.